Hello friends! Welcome to the stream. How's it going? I don't know if there's anybody here, but hello, hello. <laughs> How's the Tuesday going? <laughs> what should my library be called? Hmm. Let me know if you guys can hear me, by the way. Aww! Gabriella, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for the eight month streak. You're fantastic. You're amazing. Hopefully you're doing well. All smiles. Hello, Vicky. Hello, Kat. Welcome, welcome. I decided to wear my very large glasses today so I looked like a librarian. Do I look like a librarian? Do I? You'll have to let me know. I think I do. Even though I don't think librarians wear space buns. But I really wanted to do space buns today. So we're a librarian with space buns. It's just happening. It's just happening. I'm tired but doing well. Took my puppy Raven uh, to her first grooming appointment. Aww, that's awesome. Hopefully you can just relax tonight, watch the stream, hang out, um, and then get some rest tonight. And that's fantastic that Raven got her first grooming today. Does she look cute? Does she look very different? Because every single time Penny and Walt get groomed, they look completely different. So, yes. What should my library be named? Um, hmm. Something to do with a garden. Hmm. Aw, I went to the plant store in J&J's this afternoon. Oh, dude, I wanna go back to J&J's. I was literally at J&J's on Monday? Did I, I literally just went to J&J's two days ago? Yeah, I went to J&J's on Monday and I already want to go back. But that's such like a, a board game garden night. Going plant shopping and board game shopping. I love that. I'm just gonna call, I'm gonna call my library the garden. And then we'll put a little flower. Oh, that's a horrible flower. I need to get better at drawing flowers um, as the owner of the board game garden. Look at how awful this flower is. What kind of flower is that? It just looks like a blob. Let's try this again. So we're gonna draw the middle. We just gotta do like, whoo, whoo. Oh God, this is gonna be even worse. Oh gosh. Okay, we're just gonna have to deal with it. We're just gonna have to deal with it. It's a carnation. <laughs> the book garden. Oh my goodness. Um, I don't know how to pronounce your username. Zinzina? Exina? Exina? I'm pretty sure the X is probably silent. Is it silent? I don't know. Aw, hello Meeple Conrad. Thank you so much for the raid. Welcome friends. Hello, hello. Bonds, hello. Um, Liesl, I think it is. Liesl, hello. Beyond Dead, welcome, welcome. Hi friends, um, I'm Jenna. Thank you so much Meeple for the raid. Blame the marker. An artist needs the right tools. Exactly. That's what it is. The marker is too thick. That's what it is. It's not my artistic skills. <laughs> it's the marker. I am good at drawing, I promise. Okay. We're just going to leave out the flower. We're not going to do a flower. We're not going to do it. Um, Meeple, what were you playing? Let me know. How was your stream? How's your night going? How are you? How's it going? Thank you so much for the follow, whoever that was. I appreciate it. Um, Pillar 
Angel, thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. Rhea, hello, hello. Thank you for joining in the raid. Appreciate it. Vortac, hello, welcome to the stream. Just chatting and unboxing. Ooh, what were you unboxing? What game were you unboxing? I must know. All right. I will say I need to choose a library. If you guys do not know, I am playing Ex Libris tonight, which I think Ex Libris is currently out of print, which like Renegade Game Studios, what are you doing? You need to bring back Ex Libris because it's such a unique theme to a game where basically you are like organizing the shells of a library in like alphabetical order and like that I live for. So we definitely need to bring back Ex Libris. Um, took a look at Overboss, Millie Fiori, and the newest expansion to It's a Wonderful World. Oh, I'm so jealous. I love It's a Wonderful World so much. Um, Millie Fiori is one that I have seen and it looks fantastic as well. Um, and also Overboss apparently is really good solo. So those are all three that I am very jealous that you got to unbox today. I really liked, I really liked Ex Libris despite the theme, but the X got our copy. Oh no. And then now it's, it's out of print. What the heck? Come on. Come on, Renegade. Bring back Ex Libris. Okay. So I have, I think six different libraries to choose from. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm probably just gonna choose this one right here. Um, thank you so much for following. Um, Indecision 101, thank you so much. I think I saw an Overboss duel coming out in, on BGG, yes. I do think I saw that as well. A, I don't need to uh, relive the trauma of working at a library. <laughs> I would love working at a library. I don't read books, but I freaking love organizing things. I guess I could just reorganize my board games again and again, and that'll be kind of like the same. Um, but yes, I freaking love organizing things. It makes me so happy. Melinda, hello, welcome to the stream. How's it going? How's your Tuesday? My only problem with this game is the font is so small, yes. That is what I've seen from all of these different how to plays that I've watched. The one thing is that the, the writing is really hard to read. Um, but anyways, this is my garden. This is my, sorry, not my garden, it's my library, but it's also a garden, clearly. Um, there it is there. We have the garden of education, y'all. The garden of education. That's where we are tonight. We are in the garden. Of education. Um, I get a special worker which is the bookworm. Very cute. Hello Jamie, welcome to the stream. Not familiar with this game. So yes, Melinda, this is Ex Libris. Basically you are in a, I believe it's like a magical library and you are needing to organize the books on a shelf. And I'm very excited to play it for the first time. Um, for the other libraries, we have the Junkyard of Enlightenment. All right. We got the Swamp of Scholarship. Okay. The Literary, lit, literary Laboratory. That's a tongue twister. We have the Crypt of Accursed Knowledge. Oh, that's cool. You get a mummy. The Volcanic Biblioteca. Biblioteca. Yes. And then you also have the Clockwork Athenium. Ooh. Um, I do have another game called Athenium Mystic Library, which is somewhat similar to this, um, like the aspect of collecting different books and putting them on a shelf. But in that game, the books are all individual tiles and the game overall works a little bit different than Ex Libris. Um, so I'm super excited to see which one I prefer. Um, honestly, I'm probably going to like both of them because I just love organizing things, but yes. Um, 
Okay, I need to raid and run. Gotta grab food, but leaving a lurk. Thank you so much, Meeple. I appreciate it. Um, hopefully you had a good um, stream and have a good dinner as well. Thank you so much for raiding. Everyone go check out Meeple Conrad. He is wonderful. Have a good night. Steph, hello. Welcome to the stream. How's it going? I got this one too secondhand after hearing the Brothers Murph talk about it. Um, especially since it's fun solo puzzle. Exactly. That is why immediately when I saw this at, um, I got it at the breakout con bring and buy immediately when I saw it there, I'm like, I'm getting it right now. I think it was only like $25, which is pretty fantastic because I've seen this on like Facebook marketplace, people trying to sell it for like 80 to a hundred dollars because it is out of print. Um, but I'm really happy that I found it for a decent price and I'm excited to try it. So I do need to randomly choose six different um, of these location tiles. Oh my goodness, Steph and Kat, I am so freaking excited for this weekend. You have no idea. I am just so excited to spend an entire weekend with you guys playing games all weekend. Like, ah, it just makes me so excited. You have no idea. Let's quickly set this up. One, two, three, four, five, six location tiles. Basically in the solo game, um, I am going to be playing against the public library and any cards that are getting discarded are just going to be going to the public library. And this kind of represents, um, I watched Nick Murphy. He's talked about this game quite a bit. Um, but pretty much the public library, they don't care about organizing their books. They just want the maximum amount of books as possible. So um, you are just giving them all the books that are being discarded. And they also are going to get a certain amount of books at the beginning of each round. There are five rounds. Um, so they're going to be getting how many books, um, it depends on the difficulty level that you play, um, but they're going to be getting a certain amount of books based off of that. I will most likely be playing just the easiest mode. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit scared of losing games because it just happens so often. So I really wanna feel good about myself today and I wanna win. So we're probably gonna do it on either beginner or easy. Um, there are five different levels. I could be wrong. There might be actually more than that. Um, but there's beginner, easy, medium, hard. There's like close to impossible and impossible. There's like a bunch of different ones. Um, woot woot, me too. Woot woot. Um, so I have to try really hard not to fall in love. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Okay, so this is my garden. I don't really know where to put this, maybe just off to the side. I will be building up a um, bookshelf of books made out of these cards here. You guys will see. Um, I will be able to zoom in just so you guys can see the cards closer. But basically there are going to be six different types of cards in this, or six different types of books in this game. There are historic volumes, there are monster manuals, there are spells and potions, there are corrupted codices, reference texts, and fantastical fictions. So these are the six different types of books that you can get in the game. Um, the cards are going to be a mixture of different cards um, or different books. So you have the letter here, so that's gonna come into play when you are organizing your books on your shelf. You're gonna be organizing it from top to bottom, left to right, um, like you read. And it is going to show you how many of that um, card is in the game. So there is F and there are six different F cards in the game. And this one is the fifth of six of the F cards. And they have these three cards on it. This one is the fourth of L. Um, and you will be, so if you, for example, for some reason got four F cards, you want to organize them 
in numerical order as well. So you're gonna want, you know, two, four, five in that order. Um, and you're also going to want to order it in alphabetical order as well. Hello, Jelly Stars. Welcome to the stream. We'll mostly just be lurking, playing some video games while listening. Sounds good. Thank you so much for the lurk. I appreciate it. Um, did you guys see that um, Calico? I'm pretty sure Calico is available on the Switch now. Um, so I might, I might purchase Calico on the Switch tonight and try that out. My only thing is like... <sighs> I always hold off on getting video games that are board games because I feel like if I already have the board game, I should just play the board game. But at the same time, like it'd be really, really nice to like lay in bed and play Calico. Like it just makes me very, very happy. So we will see what happens. I might purchase it. I may not. Okay, so. I'm going to quickly shuffle up all of these category cards. I am going to get one. And this is going to be my focus of the game. So my focus is going to be ooh, spells and potions. So at the end of the game, I'm going to receive one victory point for every spells and potions book I have in my library. So that's going to go there. And then we're going to have a banned book. So this is going to be negative points for every one of these books in my library. Let's see what it is. Boom. Ooh, that makes sense. So we are going to get negative one victory point for every monster manual that we have in our library. And then we have the prominent works. So this is going to be like one that you're going to want to have in your library as well. So that's going to be historic volumes. Um, and then obviously you have three more here and these are actually going to be placed onto this board here. So at the beginning of the second round and fourth round, reveal one. So I'm going to put two up here and then one down here. We are going to reveal these two at the beginning of the second and fourth round to kind of deduce what the focus of the AI is. So, cause the AI is going to receive points based off of their focus as well. So we are trying to make sure that they don't get a ton of what their focus is. So obviously through deduction, we know that it's not spells and potions, it's not historic volumes and it's not monster manuals. So it's either going to be um, corrupted codices, fantastical fictions or reference texts. So we're trying to avoid giving them right now the black, the green, and the blue. Those are the three that we're trying to avoid giving the AI right now. This actually kind of reminds me a little bit of the solo version or the solo variant in the Isle of Cats um, because with the Isle of Cats, you are every single round revealing the number of points that each of the colored cats is going to give uh, your AI or your sister, um, the person that you are going against. Um, I have some board games in video game versions and it is nice to play in bed um, or, in, or on the plane when I don't have a table um, to put the physical game. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's good to have like, that's why I love, um, board game arena so much is because I love just being able to lay in bed and do that um, instead of having to like put out a whole board game on the table. Oopsie. As much as I prefer playing games physically, some digital versions are too good to pass up. I would not have nearly as many plays of Spirit Island and Through the Ages if I if it wasn't for the app versions. Yeah, I definitely agree. There's some that just like, it just makes it easier, um, especially with like you know, we're all busy, we all have lives, um, we all work, and sometimes you just don't have time to like set up a whole game. So it's, it is really, really nice that we have these video game adaptations of board games. So we are still able to enjoy the board games that we love um, like that. Hello, Soften Your Razor. Thank you so much for the lurk. I appreciate it. Wingspan feels so much easier app-wise too. Yes, I really actually want to purchase the app version of Wingspan. But then again, like now that it's on BGA, I'm like, do I need to buy the app version? 
I don't know, but I want to because it looks absolutely stunning with like all of the birds moving and stuff. Okay, so I am going to, what is the easiest color for you guys to see? Probably orange, I would say. Maybe not. Maybe green. Let's do green. We're going to do green for the board game garden. These are my, my little workers. These are going to go back over here. Okay. Can you guys see the books? I guess I could. I'm going to put the garden over here with my focus. I got my workers. We can kind of bring this down over here. Just so you guys can see the books that we're revealing eventually. All right. So how do I how do I play this game? That's that's a good question. <laughs> Thank you so much for following whoever that was. I appreciate it. Liesl, thank you so much. I'm pretty sure, Liesl, are you the one that is sometimes in Bonzenager's streams? Um, like you guys play board games together sometimes? Oh, hi everybody. My dogs have joined. Walter, I swear if you pee or poop down here, boy, I'ma be pissed, okay? So don't. All right. This dog has peed down here so many dang times. I think he doesn't, he doesn't register that like the basement is part of our house. So he's like, oh, this isn't our house. I'll pee here. Yes, I visit Bond sometimes. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. Save it on Steam, they'll alert you for a sale. Ooh, that's a good point. The only thing is like, I want it on my my Switch. Um, I should really just buy it when it's on sale on my Switch. Um, I do think that they have it pretty often on sale on the eShop, so maybe I should just go for it. I heart that there are different backgrounds for every season in the app version of Wingspan 2. There is, <gasps> keeps things seasonal, I love that but they are limited with the expansions. You can play in the app version. Oh yes. I do think that I saw that there is Walter, I swear. You better not be peeing, sir. Aw, are you sleeping? That's a good boy. That's a good boy. He's just laying down. Um, yeah, I saw that with the wingspan on um, the e-store or on the Switch, it is just the European expansion that they have there. I guess they can't do the Oceana expansion because that adds something. So I guess they would have to do a lot of work to like put that into the app. All right, so I'm just shuffling all of the book cards as of right now. Um, there is a lot of book cards. I'm pretty sure it says in the rule book, there are like 152, uh, book cards, which is awesome because it really gets you a good amount of variety in the, the cards that you're putting into your bookshelf. I played like 35 games of wingspan on the plane when going to Europe a few months ago. Oh my goodness. Zyphir, that's crazy. Zyphir, you're, I'm pretty sure you're uh, Raymond, right? <gasps> oh, nice. They're working on the Oceana expansion for the app. Oh, <gasps> that's awesome. Yep. Oh, look at me go. Look at me remembering people's names. Raymond, are you coming to um, Ragnarok? I don't know if, I don't know if you heard, but Ragnarok is this weekend. It's a uh, board game convention in, in Kitchener, Ontario. There's some people from the Discord joining. 
I don't think I saw you talking in the, the Discord about it, but just letting you know. There's a bunch of us going, and it's going to be fun. Unless, of course, you are busy, which would be totally understandable. Oh, I've got plans in Toronto this weekend. Oh, dang it. Well, hopefully the next time there is a uh, convention you can join. All right. Solo mode is played over a series of five rounds, played similarly to the multiplayer game, with a few key differences. Rather than competing against a rival book collector, um, you'll be attempting to have your librarian license approved. Oh. To do so, you'll need to exceed the score of the public library, which is represented by the entire discard pile. All right. Um, okay, so we have that ready. Gather 10 location cards. Shuffle. Da, da, da. Shuffle. Six. I already did the six. Placing the remaining four face down in a stack nearby. Ooh. Ah, yes. So I have the remaining four. I guess we will need those four eventually. Um, draw two, choose one. I just chose the garden one. Take the special assistant that matches your library, got it. Shuffle the category cards, did that, did that. Shuffle the book cards thoroughly, then draw six to form your starting hand and place the remaining book cards in two roughly equal stacks near the board. This will be the deck. All right. So I think we're good. Preparation phase. Okay, so for the preparation phase, this is when I'm going to be taking um, a certain amount of cards from the deck and placing it straight into the discard pile um, for the public library. So for a beginner, I'll do one card. For easy, I can do two. Challenging is three, difficult is four, very difficult is five, nigh impossible is six, and impossible is seven. Holy manoli. So you're, you're adding to the discard pile every single round on top of all of the other cards that are going to be getting discarded. So I think we're gonna start off with easy. So I'm going to be discarding two at the beginning of every round. Um, I need to figure out BGA. What's a good starter game in there? Feels intimidating for some reason. Um, I would say, yeah, Can't Stop's a good one. Um, if there's any games that you already know how to play physically, um, I think when I first got into BGA, I played a lot of like, Azul was a really good one to start off with because I already knew how to play Azul. Um, Seven Wonders is another one that I already knew how to play physically and I played it a ton physically, so I played that. Um, King Domino, I feel like, is one that a lot of people know how to play and is pretty straightforward and that would be a good one to start with. Um, but just think of different ones that um, you already know how to play physically. I play a lot of Castles of Burgundy on BGA. Kat, can we please get into another game of the Castles of Burgundy? Because I freaking love that game. And I'm not in any Castles of Burgundy games right now, and I'm very sad about it. Oh yeah, Steph said the exact same thing, thing as me. Something you've played in real life to start. I want to join. Yes, Raymond, we can definitely play the Castles of Burgundy as well. I just played in person with colleagues yesterday um, in office. Ooh, that's so fun. I'll join Castles of Burgundy game. Yes, guys, let's get a Castles of Burgundy game together. Please. All right. So I think that's all ready. Placement works the same way as multiplayer, except only one of your assistants may be present on a location tile given. And resolution phase, blah, 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 cleanup phase. Um, okay. First round, six locations. Second round, five. At the end of the fifth round, yep, yep, yep. Okay, so I think I'm good to go. 
basically we're going to be doing, uh, I think I have to put these into two piles. So we will do that. I get six cards to start. Four, five, six. And then the AI is going to be getting two. So these are the two that they start off with. Great. Which is actually, this is actually good because, uh, except if their focus is the green, but hopefully not. So that'll be, this right here is going to be the, uh, the AI, the public libraries set up there. Um, yay, ex libris, barbecue.gov, barbecue.gov. Thank you so much for joining BBQ. I'm very excited to play this game. Invite me, whoever starts it. My screen name is Merlin, Mer, Merlinda. Yep. Okay. So these are my starting cards. I'm going to actually zoom in. So these are my starting cards. We have a B, we have an E, we have an S, a T, an I and a C, which I think I'm going to kind of put them in order of the alphabet, like this. My only thing is we're trying to avoid the reds. So this one I'm gonna have to get rid of somehow. This one has a red, unfortunately. This is the only one that doesn't have a red and it does have one of my focuses. So does this one. All right. So then for, let me, I guess that doesn't really show them all the best, but all of these locations are gonna be places that I can place my workers. So this right here is the bookseller. Take one card from this location, you may shelve it, okay? So that's one location. We have the librarian's lodge. You may perform the following actions once each in any order. So A is move one of your previously placed assistants from a location on one of your home action spaces to activate it. Okay. And then swap one card from your library with any card in your hand, another card in your library or any, or to any allowed position in your library. Okay. That's cool. So you can do two actions in one there. This is the Shelf, Shelf Mason's Guild, Shelf Mason Guild. Shift any number of adjacent cards in a single row of your library, any number of spaces in one direction. Shift any number of adjacent cards in a single row of your library, any number of spaces in one direction. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um, one thing I don't know if I mentioned, but with the and scoring, you want your books to be um, stable. You want your shelving to be stable. So basically you want your book cards to be in like a square. You don't want it to be in like disheveled lines, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, you want them to be like square. Um, also, there only can be three levels of cards. They can go out as much as you want, but they can only be three levels high. The Gambling Den, this one is starting with the active player and going clockwise, all players name one unique category for each of their assistants below. Reveal four cards from the deck. The player whose category has the most matching books takes all the matching cards. May shelf one player. This one doesn't seem like it should work for the solo but it has a little solo icon on it. Reveal four cards from the deck. The player whose category has the most matching books takes all of the matching cards. May shelve one per player below and discard the rest. I'm assuming that just means that I would say something, I would take four and then it, it wouldn't really be like a, against other people. It would just be, I would automatically be the one that gets it, I'm assuming. Hi, Srevmi. Welcome to the stream. How's it going? I didn't know you were you were over here. I, I immediately recognize your username from Alex's 
um, live streams. I didn't know you were over here on, uh, on Twitch. Hello, welcome. I might be completely forgetting that you've been in this stream already, but welcome, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. Um, this is the book collector. Discard any number of cards from your hand and or library. For every two books discarded that match one of the book collector's categories, draw one card from the deck. For every two books discarded that match one of the book collector's categories, Walter, what are you doing? Hi, buddy. What would you like? Are you gonna go upstairs and go to go to bed? Do you need to go to the bathroom? Do you need to go pee pees? Oh, do you need to go to the bathroom, Penny? I might have to take a quick break before we get started, guys, to let the dogs out. I do not want what happened in the last stream, um, actually two streams ago, um, I don't want that to happen. Again, Walt pooped down here and also peed down here, and I don't want that to happen. Um, Meg streams Final Girl on Twitch on Fridays. Camp Co-op is on a work trip, so I need the garden to fill in. Aw, well, thank you so much for joining. I appreciate it. Um, okay, so you deal one card here, so I guess the two that you discard, or as many as you want, two of them have to match one of the types that are on this card that is dealt. Okay, that's good to know. And this is the mystery shack. Name a category, then pick, peek, <laughs> then pick, then peek at all the mystery cards, reveal and take any slash all cards matching that category. Return the ma remaining cards face down. You may shelve one of the newly acquired cards. Ooh, that's really nice. That's fun. All right. Are you guys just playing now? Should I, should I stop and let you guys out first? Are you good? I would really appreciate it if you just kind of like slept while I streamed. <laughs> the joys of having a puppy. Are you guys just playing? Penny, you let me know if he pees somewhere, okay? We can't let that happen. All right, so all of these spaces are going to be places that I can go. Um, I guess if you guys look up here, I don't know if you guys can read those from where we are, but um, they are going to be all of the different um, scoring things, which is nice. Um, each player earns three points for each book in their bookshelf of the category which they have the least of. Oh, not counting the band category. Interesting. Library focus. Each player earns two victory points for every book in their bookshelf of the category that matches their library's focus. Yep, yep. Um, prominent works. So we're going to be getting points for the historical volumes. Uh, shelf stability. So each player earns one point per card in their bookshelf. That is their largest stable group of cards. So that's going to be a square. Um, and then alphabetical order, of course. All right, so we do need to deal a few cards out here. One, two, three, and four. Um, they are dealt face up unless it is stated that they are face down. So we're gonna deal four there. And I do think that you're supposed to like show what cards they are. So we're gonna do this just to kind of show what is in there. We're gonna do one here, and then we're gonna deal four face down here. Hi, Joe, welcome to the stream, how's it going? Thank you so much for joining. How's your Tuesday? You too. My dogs are fighting at my feet. 
Okay, so this is a little bit stressful to me. Every round I'm gonna have three workers to place in three different spots um, to kind of, you know, place out my cards. So, I really don't want any of these. <laughs> I don't want a single one of these. <laughs> Because all three of these have the, the monster manuals, which I don't want. This one has a monster manual. So maybe my best option, discard any number of cards from your hand and or library. Um, for every two books discarded that match one of the book collector's categories, so either the yellow or the purple, draw one card from the deck. You may shelve up to two of the cards drawn. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to place a worker here on the book collector. I am going to discard these four. These two I'm going to keep in my hand. So I'm discarding, oh shoot. Do I want to do that? Oh, maybe not. So if I discard four of them, these are all going to go to the public library. That does get them one two, three, four, five negative points, which is kind of good. It doesn't get them any green, so I'm like secretly hoping that their their card is green. But whatever. I'm gonna I'm gonna discard all those. I'm going to draw two more. Ooh, okay. That's good. Walter Gregory. Sir. You don't need to bark. Um, going good. Good to see you. I haven't played Ex Libris, but I keep hearing about it. Oh, I'm so excited to play this right now, Joe. You have no idea. I've been looking for this game for a really long time, um, but it is out of print, so I'm really, really happy that I finally found it. Walter. <laughs> you are so cute. Monster Manual. Uh, are a lot of the books RPG books? Ooh, that's a good question, actually. Like, they do have literally, like, titles on every single one of these books. Um, this red one here is... Uh, Atten, Atten Into Trouble? <coughs> Walter. No, sir. <coughs> Centaurs are people, too. I think I do need to take the dogs out, guys. I, I do think that Walter barking is like, is like him saying like, mom, I need to go to the bathroom. Let me out. Hey all, ooh, ex Libra is so jealous. Ah, uh, board to play, another one we can add. Trolls IRL. <laughs> Trolls in real life, that's funny. Puppers and doggos, Oh, That's so cute, puppers and doggos, okay. Those are all of them. Let Walter P. Hashtag let Walter P. Yeah, not on my floor. Okay, so let me just quickly finish this off. So I did discard four to get two. Um, you may shelve up to two of the drawn cards. So I could shelve both of these if I wanted to. Um, I think it would probably be good for me to shelf both of these. So I think I'm going to just do this. Um, the Y and the L, I feel like if they're like right on top of each other, the L to the Y, I think that'll be good placement there. All right. So I will be right back, friends. I'm going to quickly go and let my dogs out, make sure they pee and all the things, and then I will be right back.
And we're back. Hello, hello. Walt indeed had to poop, so good thing I let him out. All right, back to some shelf organization. I do wanna like read these. Oh, maybe I don't. Lincolnthropic, Lincolnthropic topics and love potions and soothing lotions. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Your worst fears come to life. Yodeling yogurt and ice cream. <laughs> Funny, okay. So those two will go there. I have two more workers. Um, name a category, then peek at all of the mystery cards revealed and take any slash all cards matching that category. Return the remaining cards face down. You may shelve all of the newly acquired cards. Ooh, that's a good one. Hi, hi. Yay, poop. Okay, so I think I'm going to go there. I'm going to go to the mystery shack. And I am going to... Oh, I just realized all of these are green, which means that they are um, just like automatic actions, but there are some that are red that are actions that'll happen at the end of the round, I believe. Um, but I'm going to say aloud spells and potions, and I can take any slash all of the books here that have spells and potions. None. Could take that one. Could take that one, could take that one. Only thing with this is this one is going to get me negative one victory points. But I'm, I'm okay with that, I feel. This one for sure. This one would be really nice because this is also L. I don't know if you guys can see that, but this one here is also an L. Also, like, I hate the glare in this room. Ugh. Um, this one is L as well, so I could put it right beside this L, which this is an L. <laughs> if these cards were just not bendy, then they wouldn't be, if they were actually like flat. Um, these are my cards. These are the four that I'm deciding on. So this would get me two, four victory points, technically minus one. Oh my God, these dogs. Um, so I'm definitely gonna take this one for sure. And then I think I am gonna take this one just because it does give me two of my spells and potions. And then these two I will put back. There we go. And then I can automatically, right off the bat, do these or shelf these. Oh, these dogs. So I'm going to place this L here, which I have an L four out of six and an L six out of six. And then I have a D. I think I'm going to put the D. <laughs> I think I'm going to put the D up here. <laughs> Good Lord, help me. Um, drinks to help you think and drams by the gram. Walter and Penny. Good Lord, help me. Penny Rose, you sound so vicious. Calm yourself down, girly. Where are you going to put the D? <laughs> Girl, where are you going to put the D? <laughs> the D's going on the top shelf. It's getting dusty. <laughs> oh, so funny. Okay. The book titles are fun. Yeah, they are. Um, what does this one say? Lizard Folk Tales. Aw. Libellious Liberations. What are you doing, dogs? Y'all are crazy. Um, okay. Take one card from this shelf 
Ah! From this location, Penrose. Stop it. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't really think I want any of those currently. Um, shift any number. I don't want to shift. I think I might do the gambling den just because it's fun. It says, reveal four cards from the deck, the player whose category, so I have to yell out a category, uh, the player with, whose category has the most matching book, books takes all matching cards, may shelf one per player. So I would only be able to shelf one of them, but I would have to take all. Takes all matching cards. Okay. Do I want to do that? I guess that would be fun to do that. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the gambling den. I'm I'm going to say historic volumes. I'm going to say the, the prominent works. So we're going to take out one, two, three, and four. Prominent works. Boom. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. You're kidding. Oh, I should have said freaking spells and potions. No, not a single historic works. Shoot. Oh, and then you discard the rest. Oh, dang. I just, oh no, I didn't think about that very much. I just remembered that all of the discards go to the public library. Oh no. Oh, that's so sad. How did you get your hands on this game? Um, I went to a convention, Walter and Penny. Can y'all chill? Walter, Penny doesn't want to play with you. She doesn't like you. <laughs> um, I went to a convention recently in Toronto, Ontario called BreakoCon, and they have a bring and buy, and I found Ex Libris at a bring and buy. And it was like $25, which is like crazy because I've seen people trying to sell this on Facebook Marketplace for like almost $100. So it's pretty crazy. Walter. No. No, no barking. Penny doesn't want to play with you, bud. Go to sleep. Well, congrats. Thank you so much, Joe. I'm very happy that I finally found it because it has been one that I've been wanting to try for a really long time. <coughs> Walter, no. <coughs> okay, so now that we are finished the first round, I'm gonna take all three of these workers off. Unfortunately, <coughs> Walt, stop please. I have to take all of these cards off. Yes, all of these go to the discard pile, AKA, you, you guessed it. The public library. Ugh. Really sucks. Zoom this out again. So the public library already has like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 cards. How is this possible? What? Is, that's insane to me. And I only have four. So we're doing great. I really don't understand how you're supposed to win this game. I'm not going to lie. Walter. I guess because like the, the public library can't like collect the correct books. Whereas I have the control of like going for this ah! and going for this. <coughs> Walt, can you shush please? Let Penny live in peace. So they get that at the beginning of the round. Again, they also do gain two from the discard pile. <coughs> Walt, no. <coughs> Walt, Penny doesn't want to play. Go to sleep. I'm hoping he falls asleep sometime soon. I saw the out of print 
Discworld Onk More Pork Board Game in the Borrow Library at Big Bad Con and whispered to my friend, this is like $300 now, oh my goodness. Yeah, it's pretty cool like seeing games at a bring and buy or like even like I haven't experienced this yet, but like seeing games at like a thrift store at like Value Village for like so much cheaper, like somebody, I think I like remembered seeing someone find Scythe at Value Village for like $10, like $9.99 for freaking Scythe. And I'm like, that is ridiculous. <laughs> like how lucky people can get. Like, even though I already have Scythe, I would probably just buy it. No, maybe not. I would buy it to give it to a friend. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be the person to like be a scalper. Um, not a fan of that. Um, okay, so I, I need to get rid of one of these locations. So what are some that I didn't use that I don't really think would be helpful? I'm probably gonna do the Shelf Masons Guild. Oh my gosh, Walt, leave your sister alone. Shift any number of adjacent cards in a single row of your library, any number of spaces. I think I'm going to discard this one because I didn't really find that that was very helpful. All right, so now we have one less location to go to. <laughs> Can you guys chill, please? Walt, Penny doesn't want to play with you. Oh my god, these dogs are the death of me. I love them so dearly, but they make it so hard to stream. Okay, apologies guys for all of the very loud dogs. Not gonna lie, I would totally resell it if it was still good quality. Um, had all pieces, but um, at a heavily discounted price, but enough to make some money. Yeah, like I feel like that would be okay if you're not like totally ripping somebody off by like making them pay like close to retail for something that you got from the thrift store. I think it would be fine. Um, like if you got it for like $10 and then sold Scythe for like 40, that person wanting Scythe is still getting like a really good deal and you're still making some money. So actually, I don't even remember how much because Francis was the one that bought Scythe. Is Scythe above $100? These dogs. Pets make streaming very hard. Yes. Yes, they do. Penny, when she was by herself, she would make it so easy because she would just sleep. But now they just fight underneath me. Fight slash play. I never really am sure what they're doing, um, if they're playing or if they're fighting, but okay. So moving on to the next round, I do have to do one, two, three, and four face down here. I have to put one face up here. Then I also do have to put one, two, three, four face up here. And we are gonna fan these out. I swear if one of you bites my foot, you're gonna get a swift kick in the butt. They're like right on top of my foot. They're freaking me out. Okay, so actually we do at the beginning of the second round, so that is now, I do reveal the first of these cards. So the first one is, boom, Fantastical Fictions. So deduction wise, we now know that the public library is not focusing on greens. So that's good to know. They are also not focusing on these three. So the only two that they could be focusing on is black, which is the corrupted something something, corrupted codices, or they're focusing on reference texts. So black or blue um, books. Okay. So moving on to the second round, where do I want to place these dogs? Okay. 
I think A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O A B C D E F G I'm gonna be singing the freaking <laughs> alphabet so many times. Um, L M N. Okay, so I think right away, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna grab this N here because for one, this one gets me a yellow book, which is the prominent works. And then it also takes away two of the AI's um, possible scoring. I'm hoping that theirs is the, the blue book. And I can put this here, because I have L, M, N. So I'm not gonna be able to put any M's unless I like switch things around or anything like that. M, okay. So that's gonna go there. Unfortunately, I can't get any more, but that's okay. The AI is gonna get those. What you gonna do when you live in a shoe? All right. Um, I'm gonna do the mystery shack again. And I think I'm going to say, name a category, then peek at all the mystery cards revealed and take all or any slash all cards matching that category. Do I say spells and potions or do I say historic volumes? The player with the first, second, and third most books of this category. Okay, so I just want to get more than the AI. How many does the AI have? Oh my gosh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The AI currently has 13 historic volumes. <laughs> So I think I'm gonna say historic volumes, please. Give me the historic volumes. Okay. Okay. All right. Amazing. And then this can go here. Look at that. Look at we got we got four historic volumes right off the bat. And then two of my potions. Three of my potions, actually. And we didn't get any of the monster manuals, which is awesome. All right, so these dogs. Um, I got an S, a U, and an I. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, Q, R, S, T, U, V. Okay, everyone. Can we please calm down? Penny Rose, chill, bro. I don't know why Walt does this. Like Penny gets mad at him like a lot. You guys can probably hear that. She gets pissed at him, but yet he still comes back and tries to play. Walter, can you stop? Penny, Penny doesn't know how to play. <laughs> Bath size, size is around 90. Okay. With all the expansions and stuff, it's over 100. Actually, yeah, I just checked. After tax now, it'll be over 100. Oh, wow. I am so jealous of that person. That's what little brothers do. Exactly, I guess. Speaking of expensive uh, game type item puzzles, vintage puzzles can get so expensive. Oh, I did not know that. I'm definitely not in like the vintage puzzle community, but that's interesting. I did not know that. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, A, J, K, L, N, P, Q, R, S, T, U. Okay, so these will probably be good next to each other. Ooh, and then I have, oh, I have another S here too. Amazing. Okay. Um, oh yes, I can shelve one of these. So let me do, let me do the U. I'm gonna shelf the U here. V, W, X. V, W, and X, I won't be able to put in between these. Um, it does tell you how many of each card. Um, oh, 
shoot. I just realized that I didn't I didn't use my my wormy dude. Perform both home actions. May discard one card to repeat. Draw one card or shelve one card. Well, look at that. Okay. Well, let's just say on my last round. On my last round, I just draw I I drew one card. Okay. Ooh, we got A. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Funny. I'm not either. I do watch some puzzle content on YouTube and have looked at a few myself. That's interesting. Yeah, I never really thought about like other puzzles other than the ones that you can just find at like retail, you know? Like I didn't really think there would be like vintage puzzles, but I guess there's vintage everything really. Like what did puzzles look like back in the day? Probably the exact same, I'm assuming. Okay, so that was my move for last round. And then I need to remember that I do have my Wormy. Perform both home actions. May discard one card to repeat. Oh, okay. So... I believe what happens is that you can use your worm on one of these, but if you use your worm here, the worm allows you to do both of the actions. So you can draw one card and shelve one card. Okay. So let's just say I didn't put my worm there. Um, okay. But I can do it this round if I want to. So it would be really nice to be able to shelve like two more cards. Is there any place here? That'll allow me to shelve multiple cards. Penny, Penny Rose, calm yourself down. Oh my goodness gracious, girly. I don't know what I want to do here. I feel like there's not a lot of ways for me to shelf cards and I just want to shelf cards, you know? We perform the following actions once each in any order. Move one of your previously placed assistants from a location to one of your home action spaces and activate it. Okay, could do that. Swap one card from your library with any one card in your hand, another card in your library, or any allowed position in your library. I don't think I want to do that one. Oh, you know what? I have two eyes as well. So I have A-I-I-S-S. I will go here. I'm going to take this. I'm going to take one from here. I'm going to place it here and activate it. So I can draw one card or shelf one card. So I am going to shelf one card. I'm going to shelf S10 down here. And then I can also move one of your previously placed, uh, no, I did that already. Swap one card from your library with any card in your hand, another card in your library, or any allowed position in your library. Okay. Um, I don't think I want to do that. I got an A, two I's, and an S. So I think I'm just gonna stick to that. I'm not gonna do that, but I am gonna place my worm on here. Now that I don't have a worker here, I'm gonna place my worm here. It says, take one card from this location, you may shelf it. Walter and Penny. 
I'm gonna take this one here, which is D. This is six out of seven. And I'm gonna place another D up in the top shelf. The only thing about these cards is they are a little bit wonky. So I'm gonna place this right beside this other D here. I like that. All right, all right. And I think that is everything for my turn. So all of these now get discarded. The AI does not get too many cards this round. Still quite a bit, but not too many. Um, there's some amazing puzzles I've found by indie companies. Of course, more expensive, but the packaging for most all of them is absolutely stunning. Oh, I need to look into these like fancy puzzles. I never thought about like fancy puzzles. Okay, so the AI got those four cards. I get my workers back. Okay. The AI gets two cards right off the bat. We don't get to reveal the next card yet. We reveal the next card on the beginning of round four. So we're going into round three. I do have to take away one of these. And ooh, I kind of like all of them, to be honest with you. Um, I like the Mystery Shack a lot. Book Collector. I think I might get rid of the Gambling Den because if I say a category and then I pick up four and that category is not anywhere, all four of those cards go to the AI. So it's not really the best one for me to have. So I'm gonna take that one out. We're going to move these together. All right. Can you guys please be careful around the courts? All right. So we are now on to round three. I'm gonna take one card, place it here. One, two, three, four, face down on the mystery shack. And one, two, three, four, face up at the bookseller. So we have, ooh. We have A, V, T, and H. A lot of these have the monster. So I think I might take the A and leave all of the monsters for the AI. We'll put those there. All right, all right. Um, okay. So I think that is everything. We are ready to go. Oh, hi, Tim Chewin. How's it going? How are you, Tim? <laughs> Happy Tuesday. The Magic Puzzle Company is one of my faves. It's not a typical puzzle. Ooh, the Magic Puzzle Company. I am gonna look into that, cat, Because I do think that like doing a puzzle in the springtime, I think would bring me a lot of joy. Just like on a weekend, just like with the, with the windows open, the doors open just like doing a puzzle. I think I wanna, actually, you know what? I think we have a puzzle that we got from my parents a few <laughs> Christmases ago, um, but we haven't done it. <gasps> would it be a flower puzzle? Absolutely. I would love to do just like a gorgeous puzzle. And then like being able to, I've always wanted to like frame a puzzle. So like doing a puzzle that's actually like pretty and I could put up on my wall, that would be awesome. Um, I think the puzzles that I've gotten in the past, um, we have a New York skyline puzzle, which is pretty cool, um, but I don't think I'd want to put that on my wall. Um, and then we also got a Santorini puzzle um, because I've always wanted to travel to Santorini, but again, I don't really want to put a picture of Santorini on my wall. It's kind of pointless. So I definitely think that like a floral puzzle would be fun and then I could put it somewhere here in the in the board game garden like room talking about games going out of print is making me want to buy more games from my wish list <laughs> I know it's so scary just like the whole like 
I really want this game, but like it might not be available in the future. I've been thinking about buying, um, what's that game? Encyclopedia, because I know that Holy Grail, the publishing company is like done. They're not, I don't think they're gonna be making any more. Um, and there is a specific website that I don't wanna say because I don't want it to go out of stock, still has stock of Encyclopedia. Um, and I really want to get it, but I just don't have the money for it. And it just makes me so sad. And I don't know if it's like going to sell out and it's going to make me so sad. All right. Um, anyways, back to the game before I cry about games going out of stock and never being able to play it. Okay. Um, I do have two A cards, so, or I have one A card so far. I have another S that could go here. I need to make sure that I'm making this a square though. Let me quickly kind of put these like this so that I can fit more here. Um, all right, so right away, um, I do think that I'm going to place a worker here. I'm gonna grab this A card and I can shelve it. So I'm going to put it right beside the D. <laughs> this is Assisting Astrology with Technology. That's a cool name. And As I Die Trying, The Art of the Steel. So this is a seven out of seven. That's gonna go beside D, six out of seven. There we go. Uh, I'm going to Santorini in June. <gasps> Belinda, I am so freaking jealous. What the heck, man? Sounds awesome. You should do it. Uh, glue it together along the way. Yeah, that'd be so much fun. Oh, Melinda, have a fantastic time in Santorini. I'm so jealous. Uh, I have to remind myself there will be new games I want in the future, so it's it's okay if I miss out on some. Yes, exactly. That's something I always have to remind myself. Haha, <laughs> why can't we just own all the games? I know, right, Tim? I just want them all. Either money or storage space or both, yep. Uh, Jenna, where's my I'm on your team bro shirt? <laughs> Francis and I were talking about different merch ideas. I definitely want to do some merch in the, in the future. And I'm on your team bro would be pretty freaking funny. Um, also I was thinking like, I always, I don't know why I've, I've done this ever since starting the board game garden. I always say, shall we, uh, like whenever I say like, let's get into this video, shall we? And I don't know why I've done that, but I think it would be fun to have a t-shirt or like a sweater or something that says, let's play board games. And then on the back it says, shall we? Uh, I think it would be cute. And then like some sort of board game garden logo. Um, would be fun. It is so addicting to buy games though. Yeah, I, I do agree. It's just so much fun. I think part of the joy of being in the board game hobby to me is like ex being excited about new games and like trying new games, um, which is nice because, well, it's nice now because I do have people that I can like get together with and like I can try new games that they have. Um, as opposed to just always having to, if I want to try a new game, I have to buy it myself. Um, it's been nice to like have board game friends that like we could share collections and like play games together. Um, yeah, I think it, it's really nice to have that now. There, There is puzzle glue, although I'm not sure what the difference is between regular glue. Yeah, I've always... I've always wondered that. Like, what is the difference between normal glue and puzzle glue? I don't know if like puzzle glue is maybe like, I don't know. Like it dry, well, all, no, all glue dries clear. Maybe it like makes a, like a different texture. I don't know. Sign me up for that merch launch, please. Aw, we'll do too. <laughs> I'd buy it, aw. I love that shall we idea. Well, thank you. Yeah, I thought it was funny and I thought it'd be cute. Update, nothing really if you consider Mod Podge glue. Okay. 
Yeah, I feel like you could just buy Mod Podge and do that for your, your puzzle, for sure. All right, so what have I done so far? I've done this. I'm just gonna leave all of these for the AI because that's a lot of negative points for them. Oh my gosh, what are you two doing? Penny, is he, is he hurting you? What are you doing? <laughs> I actually think that Penny's having fun. She's like scratching at the ground now. It does make me happy that like Penny doesn't just have to like lay and be bored all the time now. Like as much as this is annoying, like them always constantly like fighting and playing, it really makes me happy that she like has something to do and someone to play with and someone to just hang out with all the time. Personally, I think Mod, Mod Podge is its own sector. <laughs> okay. Um, so I have three more workers here. Um, I really don't think that there's any cards that I want to swap as of yet. I do have another A that I could place here. Um, I have two I's and another S. So like this S could go here for sure. Oh my gosh, everyone calm yourselves down. Yeah, Penny, get him. Get him. Okay, I'm gonna put my wormy here. When I place my worm here, I can do both of these actions. So I can draw a card and then I can shelve a card. So I'm gonna draw a card. Okay, I got a Z, which is pretty good. I could always put the Z here. Um, only thing is that it does have a monster manual, but I think I'm okay with that. I really need to get a lot more of these, uh, well, I guess it's only six points. If the AI gets more of these historic volumes than me, they get 15 and I get nine. So I don't think it's like the worst possible thing that could happen. My father was a big chess player. He asked if board game conventions have much chess. I said, no, he asked why. I thought about it and said, everyone's already played chess. <laughs> Very true. I do think that there's probably like conventions that are like full on chess conventions, right? I feel like that's something. Has, maybe, maybe. I would go to a chess convention. I think it'd be fun. Oh my God, you dogs, you doges. Okay, um, may discard one card to repeat. Oh, I could discard a card to repeat. Perform both home actions, may discard one card to repeat. Okay, so I did pick up a card or draw a card. Ow, dogs. Okay, I'm gonna shelve a card, and I think I am going to discard a card to repeat. I think I'm going to discard the Z. Mm, but then that would get them more historic volumes, though. Maybe I will not repeat. Maybe I will just stick to that. Okay. Ow! Dogs! Oh my god! These dogs! Everyone calm down! <laughs> They're so cute, yet so chaotic. I mean, there's chess tournaments, very true. There are definitely chess conventions. That's another reason chess isn't a uh, at board game conventions. Yeah, I feel like most people, if they're into chess, like it's a completely different thing. Like even though chess is a board game, I guess it's a, what are those types of games considered? Are they like parlor games? I think that's what they're called. So like, I guess it's like a totally different audience, I guess, but similar audiences. Who is knocking something? Walter, get out from underneath there. Oh my God, these dogs. All right, so with my next two workers, I'm gonna go to the mystery shack 
And I'm going to say, Walter, stop. Name a category, then peek at the mystery cards revealed and take any slash all cards without matching category. So I am going to look and I'm going to say historic volume. So any yellow books in here I get. Yellow. Oh, yeah, baby. Yellow book. Yellow book. Yellow book. Oh, amazing. We love this. Okay. And then there's just a W left, which we will place there. Okay, so we got another D, another L, ooh, and an F. Okay, cool. So, I guess now I'm going to go here, and I'm going to do these two. So I'm going to, um, ooh. Move one of your previously placed assistants from a location to one of your home action spaces. So I'm going to do that first. I'm going to go here. I am going to place this D card here, like so. And then I get to draw a card. Something good. An R, okay. Oh God. And then I get to swap one card from your library with any card in your hand, another card in your library or any allowed position. So I'm going to actually switch these two D cards. So this one is seven out of seven and this is five out of seven. So I want them to be in, oh wait, hold up. <gasps> oh no. I've messed this all up. Ow! Dogs! Calm yourselves down! Okay, I guess I'm gonna have to switch some things around after because I didn't realize that this here is six out of seven. So I have six, five, seven. So I'm gonna have to switch these two after. Walter is making my dog bark. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. My dogs are insane. They're being crazies. All right. Walter. Stop. Please hold, everyone. Please hold. I'm not going to go on be our back screen. Can you stop barking? Can you stop barking, please? Y'all are crazy. They say, dad's not home, we're gonna go crazy. Hello, I love your hair, it looks so cute. Sprudel, hello, welcome to the stream, thank you so much. Holy crap, how have you been? How's it going? You know what I'm gonna do? Okay, I'm gonna take this back. Um, instead of playing the D card here, I'm gonna play the A, no, I'm gonna play the D card here. Oh my God, these dogs are insane. I'm gonna play the D card there, and then I can just switch the A and the D. Boom. So now it's five, six, seven. Boom. All right. So is that, everything for me. I've used all my workers. Oh. Walter, please stop. Walt, shh. Penny, can you shut him up? Just play with him so he's happy. Can you guys like maybe just go upstairs? That'd be great. Um, good. How have you been? Um, so did Francis tell you about the Monster Hunter World board game? Will you play it? Um, I have heard of the Monster Hunter World board game. I am going to kick you out, both of you. Um, I have heard of the board game. I think I was more aware of the Monster Hunter board game than Francis was. Um, which, by the way, we are good. We are wonderful. We got a second puppy, and that is who you are hearing barking right now. So it's a little bit of a chaotic um, stream and a chaotic life right now with a puppy. But 
it's fun. Um, and we're, we've been good. We've been good. I'm happy that it is finally somewhat warm outside. It got a little bit cold this past week, but I'm hoping it'll get warm again. Um, but yes, I do want to try the Monster Hunter board game. Um, Francis was just watching Monster Hunter, um, like previews of the new updates that are coming. He was just watching that today. And I think I, I, uh, I thought of you when he was watching that. I was like, I wonder if Francis has talked to Sprudel. It's been so long. I saw him in your stories. Do Penny and Walter get along? They do for the most part. I think um, Walter's like puppy energy gets a little bit too much for Penny sometimes. Um, and she kind of gets mad at him. Walter, 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 just go to sleep, bro. Just go to bed, fall asleep, Walter. Thank you, Penny. The reason why he's barking is because Penny is hiding underneath a chair. Penny, can you continue playing with him so he's not barking? Good Lord, help me! Did you see the viral videos of the dog who looks exactly like Snoopy? Yes, we have. And Francis follows it on Instagram, I think. And we were actually thinking if Walt had black ears, he would probably look more like Snoopy than that dog. Um, but it is very, very cute. We didn't talk in a while now. Last time we talked was when I did a little stream a few weeks ago. Aw. Well, I'm glad you guys are still keeping in touch. Oh, I'm going to murder this dog. Walter, can you go to sleep, buddy? It's time for bed. Yeah, it's time for it's not it's not playtime anymore. It's sleep time. Don't touch that cord. I have not played Monster Hunter in a long time. Yeah, Francis has not played in a quite a long time. But I think he said he is looking forward to the the updates. Um, if you guys are watching this and don't know, my partner Francis was very very much into Monster Hunter. And he used to stream Monster, Monster Hunter sometimes. Um, and Sprudel was one of his uh, Monster Hunter friends that he played Monster Hunter with all the time. Okay. I think the dogs have calmed down, which is great. I should not speak too quickly. Okay. So these four are going to the AI. This is going to the AI. And this is going to the AI. They have a lot of cards, which is a little bit scary. All right. Um, I get all of my workers back. Uh, that is it. And then we do have to get rid of one of these. So I think I'm going to get rid of the book collector. Do I want to get rid of the book collector or do I want to get rid of the mystery shack? See, the thing with the mystery shack is I like getting stuff from there, but if I say something and it's not there, then the AI gets four cards. And then the AI also gets four cards from this too. So maybe I want to get rid of one of these two to scale down the amount of cards the AI is getting. Or do I just want to, I think I'm going to get rid of the, the book collector because I don't really use that one. This one has been handy for like swapping things and I feel like swapping is going to become more handy and also the whole like being able to take a worker from one spot and move it to my board so I can do multiple actions on one spice is really nice. So I think I'm going to take out the book collector and then we're going to keep these three. We're going to have the bookseller, the librarian's lodge, and the mystery shack. And then obviously we have my garden of education as well. Um, he burned out. Yeah, he definitely did. Francis gets burnt out of things very quickly. Honestly, so do I. Um, and I'm pretty like surprised that I'm not at all burnt out of board games. Like I haven't gotten burnt out of board games. Um, and I think it's just because there are so many board games 
and like each of them give you a unique experience. Um, like I could be burnt out of like, you know, bigger games, but I'm always gonna love those like just light roll and rights and stuff to play. And then if I get burnt out of roll and rights, then there are always like big euros that I can play. <coughs> Walter. <coughs> Walt. <coughs> Stop. Yeah. Tell him, Penny. Tell him. Uh, I don't have friends that want to play anymore. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm going to murder this dog immediately. It goes into baby voice. <laughs> Literally. I think we fed each other's addiction a bit too much. Yeah, you guys were addicted to Monster Hunter. When Francis like plays a board or plays a video game, he gets freaking sucked in. I don't see that man for weeks. With Monster Hunter, it was like I didn't see that man for a year. <laughs> I like light games too. Yeah, it just you never get bored of them and like they just don't take as much thought and commitment so it's like more difficult to get burnt out of them because it just like it just feels nice to play them you know also i forgot to ask if you have a panel or anything for gen con i'm trying to compile a list of people i want to meet so as of right now I don't have any panel or anything. I don't know. I don't think they'll ask me to do a panel or anything. I don't think I'm that cool or cool enough to do that. Um, but I will be at, there's a booth that I'm working at. It is the Third World Studios booth. They are a board game publisher. If you do want to see me, I will be there for six hours of the day. And then once I am finished working at the booth, I will be playing board games. And that's hopefully all my Gen Con is going to be because I just want to hang out, play board games, work a little bit at the booth, um, like I said, at the Third World Studios booth. And I'm excited. My, my partner, Reese Walter. <laughs> Walter. <laughs> Get him, Penny. Get mad at him. It's funny because whenever I get mad at Walter, Penny gets mad at him. So it's like, oh, I'm protecting mama. Like, oh, she's getting mad at him. I'm going to get mad at him. It's very cute. Well, to be fair, none of my friends saw me either because my sleep schedule was so messed up. Yes, I remember that. Oh, my goodness. My partner recently discovered Animal Crossing and that's all she does now. <laughs> Dude, that was me. When Francis was obsessed with uh, Monster Hunter, I was obsessed with Animal Crossing. So... We didn't see each other at all. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He was also obsessed with Animal Crossing too for a while. I was obsessed with it longer than he was, um, but we both got obsessed with uh, Genshin Impact at the same time as well, which was great. I will try to have to find you. Um, I want to meet Dice Tower, Tim Chuan, and you so far. Oh, holy shit. I mean, holy crap. I try not to swear on here, but that's crazy to be in that like group of people like the dice tower i'm excited to meet the dice tower actually um i've also i've already met tim chuin but i do uh want to hang out with him more because we did not get the only game that we played when i went to california was um when we filmed andromeda's edge um that's the only time that tim and i have played any games together so i'm excited to play that or i'm excited to just play games with tim if he has time, of course, because he is so much cooler than me. I don't know if Tim's still in the chat, but Tim, could you like make some time to play some games with me? I know you have so much to do and you're such a cool guy and you probably have too much to do and you, you don't want to hang out with me, but it's okay. I'll just, I'll be there if you want. <laughs> I just turned into major, major nerdy Jenna. <laughs> You were so cool enough to do a panel. No, are you kidding? With like the dice tower there and Tim there and like freaking oh, all of the big, huge, like Alex from Board Game Co. Like I'm not as cool as them. Uh-uh. I need to try Genshin Impact. You do. It is fantastic. I love it. I do want to start playing it again, but it took up a lot of my time, I will say.
yeah, I went all in on AE and saw that video and I was super jealous. <laughs> I do have my critiques and criticisms of Genshin, especially with the um, almost non-existent difference in skin tones, but always, or anyways, I really do love it. Shame I'm burnt out on both though. Yeah, I do, I do agree with the whole skin tone thing. Like there was um, just the one character that had like a slightly darker skin tone and it made me so mad. Stop Jenna, we'll play games. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure I'm going yet, but I'm trying. You're not going to Gen Con, Tim? Tim! I need to play games with you! No! But yeah, Tim, you're totally cooler than I am. And yeah, just saying. Reyna is trying to get more of us back into Guild Wars 2. What in the heck the heck is that? Walter, why are you so... Like, you really, yeah, we need to take you for a W-A-L-K -okay at some point. All right, on to the fourth round. Let's see what is not Walter. I'm hoping the AI, I hope this is the black. Yeah, okay. So I was right when I said that blue is the AI's focus. So I'm going to have to try to take as many of the blue cards away from the AI. One, two, three, and four. Penny Rose, what are you doing, girly? Penny, what are you doing? <laughs> She's like trying to get up onto my board game shelf. What are you doing, dude? One, two, three, four. These are face up. These are face down, these are face up. So these are going to be the ones on the shelf. Ooh, okay. I'm getting so many Ds, what the heck? <laughs> so many Ds on my shelf. <laughs> Why do I have to be so dirty minded? What is wrong with me? Good Lord. Um, Guild Wars 2 is an MMO. Um, what's an MMO? Multi, no, meh. Multi-man operation. No, I don't know what it is. <laughs> all right, all right. Calm yourselves down, everyone. Okay. What do I want to do here? This is the fourth round. So I still have one more round after this. Okay. So. It really sucks that I got rid of that one tile that said shift. Cause now that I see that D there, it's D four out of seven. So I, I wanna like shift this over and put it there, but I also don't want my bookshelf to be super long. So like, it would be really nice if I could just like shift all of these down one, but I can't do that. So that's unfortunate. That's what she said. My son's favorite joke. <laughs> Massively multiplayer online game. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I got so many D's on my shelf. <laughs> I don't know why I have to say it like that too. All right. So I'm going to go here right away. I'm going to grab this one to make sure the AI does not get it. Um, I think I've given up on the historical volumes against the AI because they just have way too many things. Uh, I'm most likely going to discard some of these, but I don't know which ones I want to discard. Um, A can go there. I'd actually just get rid of the D. <laughs> I have two eyes. So I could put the eyes here and here. I have another L. Oh, the L can actually go right there. I have an F. A, B, C, D, E, F could go there. 
All right. Take one from the shelf and then shelve it. What did I take from the shelf? I took the D. I took the D from the shelf. Do I want to do this? Dang it. I actually don't think I want to do that. I think instead, I'm gonna take this U. Shoot, I even, oh, dang it. No, because I want the U here. Shoot, none of these work out for me, really. I guess I could take the F, because that would get me some points there. It would get me negative one for the, the monster. What, do I have another F? So I do have an F here. So I could do F, F. Yeah, let me do that. I'm gonna take the F instead, and I'm gonna place it here, like that. Good enough. Finally a board game about getting the D. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, so funny. Finally. <laughs> you may shelve one of the newly acquired cards. Okay. So... I'm gonna place a worker here. What category do I wanna say? I will say that I do get points for the least amount of one card, not including the band book. And that is the red. I have two reds, but then I also have two of the black. So maybe I will say um, corrupted Codices? Wapow? Oh no! Okay. Well, that's a bummer. Alright, alright. Okay. Well, I think I know what I'm going to do next. <laughs> Aw! Kimma22, thank you so much for the subscribe. Thank you so much for using your Prime. I really appreciate that. F's in the chat. <laughs> Do you prefer Ex Libris or Athenium Mystic Library? Which is the better library themed game? Or Biblios, I guess. I actually, funny thing you say Biblios, because I just got Biblios, Quill, and Parchment in the mail, which I'm very excited to try. Um, I'm going to have to do like a whole video on like library themed games, because I'm getting a lot of them and it makes me really happy. Um, even though I don't like read books, for some reason, games about books are like cozy to me and I love them. Um, so yes, out of those ones, Biblios is barely book themed, a terrific card game, but basically themeless. Sir, what are you doing? What's, what's wrong? What happened? Why are you ganging? Oh. Did you, did you eat something? Did you eat some hair? Are you okay? Are you okay? Do you guys hear that? <laughs> I think my dog's dying. <laughs> Not actually. Um, Quill and Parchment is decent. Oh, nice. Miss BBQ likes regular Biblios two player better. Okay, good to know. I do maybe want to try Biblios, just the, uh, the main game. <sighs> yeah, I hear hacking. Lovely noises, whichever dog that is. It's it's a uh, it's Walter. I don't know what's wrong. He, I think he was just choking on something and gagging. Uh, yes, Jenna. I always play the studious librarian wizard in Dungeons and Dragons. On top of my board gaming uh, backing, I also have a huge backlog of books. I think your dog is about to throw up. He's good. He's good. He was just choking and then like dry heaving because I guess he 
He was either barking too much or he was like biting Penny too much, but he's fine now. I apologize for the gross noises in the background. What a dog. Um, but that's awesome, Kim. That is awesome. Not awesome that you have a big backlog of books to read, but I also do have a backlog of books that I need to read as well. Um, I will say that. Okay, so I am gonna go here. And, hmm. Move one previously placed assistant from a location to one of your action spaces. So I'm gonna put one here and then I'm gonna take this one from the mystery shack and I'm gonna place it, oh wait, 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 wait. I don't wanna do that yet. I'm gonna put my wormy here first. Um, and because I put the worm there, I'm gonna draw one card and shelve one card. So I'm gonna draw one card. I got an E. A, B, C, D, E, and I already put the F there, so I can't do that. Um, I can place the A if I want to. I do want to place the I's and the Z and the L. Oh, shoot. I think I'm going to shelve this card here, which is another F. And I don't really know about this R. So these three I could discard if I wanted to. I'm gonna put that F there because when I use the Librarian's Lodge, I can just swap them. Cause this is F two out of six and this is F four out of six. So I need to swap those. Um, I am going to do this again. So I'm going to discard a card which I just remembered that when I discard cards, that's gonna get the AI points unless I discard the ones that have a lot of their, uh, <gasps> no, I need to discard ones that don't have their focus. So, I'm gonna discard this R, cause that's gonna get them a negative point and I'm allowed to then repeat it. So I can draw one card and shelve one card. So I'm gonna shelve this L here. Okay, I got an M, which A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N. So it had to be in between these two. So I can probably discard that one as well if I want to. Um, hmm. Okay. I'm gonna discard this M to do it again. So I'm gonna get one, oh, another M, and I'm going to shelve one. So, I know what, I can discard that E as well. I'm gonna shelve this, mm, maybe not yet. I'm gonna shelve this I here. Uh, actually, this I first here. Okay, and then I can may discard one card to repeat. I actually don't know if I can do this over and over again, but I'm just doing it because I need all the help that I can get because I'm gonna lose to this AI. Um, okay, I'm gonna discard this M to pick up a card. All of the M's are together, what the heckity heck. And then I get to shelf a card. So I'm gonna put that there. You know what I just realized? I still have one more turn after this. So I guess me doing this, like I could be doing this stuff next round. You know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna not do that. I'll just put that back. Nice thing about playing solo. Okay, I'm gonna slow down a little bit. Okay, 
So I'm going to place the Librarian's Lodge here. I'm going to then move this guide here. And I'm going to pick up a card. Boom. Oh. Can't use that one. I could. I could place it here and then swap these two, but we'll see. Um, okay, so that was for that. That was for the first move. Swap one card. I'm going to swap these two here, like I said. All right. So that is everything. Is that everything that I wanted to do? I guess so. This is not proper Dewey Decimal System. <laughs> D? What's a pirate's favorite letter? <laughs> Good one, Joe. We all know the answer. Oh no! Yeah, everyone, everyone ignore Nightbot again. That's me. I forgot about that. Regular Biblio seems like a card game that doesn't work two player, but it really does. Oh, good to know. I started a book club during the pandemic to keep myself motivated as I knew I'd be more accountable to read if I was doing it with others. Yes. I feel like I would enjoy doing a book club um, just because it would motivate me to, to read books. We started with seven people and at the meeting of the first book, only three people read it. <laughs> oh no. Uh, I forgot you were Canadian until you said Zed. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Z, Z, Z Garcia. <laughs> but yes, we all know a pirate's favorite letter is R. And ignore Nightbot. Rose Garden or Rose, Rose Gauntlet Entertainment is not sponsoring this stream. And Wild Gardens is, I do think it is over. It is no longer, uh, the campaign has ended over on Backer Kit. So, sorry about that. Or you'd think so, but their first love be the she. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a really good one. Love that, okay. I thought I was going to do something else here. Oh, you know what I was going to do? I was going to go to this spot. Shoot. Because now the AI is going to get all four of those. Ooh, I'm definitely losing this game. This is not good. I don't know why I always play games for the first time on stream. Cause then like I do really bad. <laughs> and it's always like when I, I like play a game more that I start to do better. But uh, this is a lot of cards for the AI. Holy crap. All right. So now we are moving on to the last round. This is round number five. We already know that the AI's focus is blue. And I do have to get rid of one of these. So, hmm. I think I'm gonna get rid of the bookseller. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of the bookseller. So now we only have two locations left, everyone. Two locations left. All right. And then I do have to put in one, two, three, four on this spot. And I'll just put these into one now. All right. So moving into the last round, I have four workers. I right off the bat am going to go here. And I, what category do I want to name? I think I'm going to name Corrupted 
Walter, I swear if you're peeing over there, buddy. I'm going to be very mad at you. Having a puppy, y'all. Also, thank you so much for following. Um, I think that's Man Quinn. Man Quinn? Thank you so much. Welcome. Uh, da, 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 da. As long as they are not semen. Because <laughs> that just sounds wrong. Oh my god. So funny. Why are you barking, bud? I think daddy might be home soon. That's That might be what you're barking at or growling at. All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to do corrupted codices here. Just because I want more of those in my shelf. Ooh. Okay, so I got one there. I got one here. And none there. All right. Okay. I just want to keep in mind what those two are because I might be able to put another worker here in the future. So I have an A and an H. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, E, F, G, H. So I could actually start another column here. We will see how that goes. Okay. Good morning, garden game. Gang, game. Good morning, Bafter. What's up, welcome. Uh, don't feel bad, board game garden. It makes us feel like we are not alone. I played a bunch of board games uh, super wrong the first time. In fact, it took until our third game of Honey Buzz to play correctly. Yeah, honestly, yeah. I think me playing these for like the first time on stream, it's probably good for you guys to like see how the game plays realistically, I guess is a good way to put it. Like, I'm not gonna be good at these games, um, but it's fun to like, for you guys to see the first impression of it and like how I feel about it right off the bat. Um, I'm enjoying this. I feel like with the solo variant, having like starting with a bunch of locations and then all the way down to the fifth round only having two, it is pretty difficult and like the fact that the public library has like the most amount of cards right now is a little bit stressful i'm not gonna lie um okay so that was everything for that turn there um i am going to hmm. this is hard because how in the heckity heck am i supposed to Like, am I allowed to have more than one here? Because you're not allowed to have more than one worker on each spot. And like, I figured the worm would be its own. So like, I'm allowed to have another worker here, but then like, where, I guess, yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna put my wormy guy here. And, oh, Francis is on his way home now, okay. I got a text message from my mom too. She invited me for a karaoke night at their house this Saturday, but I am at a board game convention this weekend. Mother, you should have told me before. I would have loved to come to a karaoke night at your house. Come on. Did I say morning? <laughs> good evening, Bafter. <laughs> why did I say, why did I say good morning? It's 9.42 p.m. <laughs> okay, um, we need to focus, guys. We're on our last round here. All right. I need more purple. I could do my eye. Okay, so with my wormy here, I can get one off the top. Ooh, we got a W. But that's two, two growly faces. So I'm not gonna use that one. Um, I'm gonna do 
I'm going to do this eye here because that will add another one of the corrupted codices, which is good. I16L146. And three, okay. We're doing pretty good here. We're doing pretty good. Our, our shelves are structurally sound for the most part. Um, okay. Um, I think I am going to discard a card to repeat it. So I'm gonna discard this W because that's gonna get the AI some negative points. And that will allow me to draw a card and then shelf a card. Draw a card, we have two H's now, okay. And I'm going to shelf a card. Ooh. Something in between N and S. A, B, C, D, F, G, H, A, J, K, L, M, N, N, O, P, Q, R. O, P, Q, and R. O, P, I don't have any of those. So I think the only thing I could do is add this S here, maybe. And then I could swap these two. Yeah, I think I might do that. This unfortunately does get me a negative point, but I think it'll be worth it. So I'll do that. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, H, I, F, G, H, R, S, T, U, V, W. I almost said W, H, Y, and Z. Am I okay? What is that letter there? W, X, X. <laughs> uh, also our first like five games of Paleo, I kept adding a different module after the night phase. Turns out I was making it like super difficult Dark Souls mode. <laughs> you were just su supposed to play with those objectives. I was adding a whole deck every round. Oh my goodness. I made us think it was ghost stories level difficult. Oh, I've heard a lot of things about ghost stories. Time Roller, hello, welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for the raid, I appreciate it. How was your stream? What were you playing or unboxing? All right, um, do I wanna do another discard? I don't think I do. I think we're good with that. Um, I am going to go here. This will allow me to move this to here. And then that will allow me to either draw or play a card. So I am going to play. I think I'm going to play my Z here so that everything is nice and square at the end of the game. And then I do get to swap either one from my hand to my library or swap from my library to my library. So I'm gonna swap these two like that. Boom. And then, is there anything else that I did here? Move my worker here, activate it, I did. I put my Z and then swap cards, okay. So then I have one more worker. I'm gonna place it again at the mystery shack. I'm going to say spells and potions because I'm pretty sure both of these have spells and potions. That will make it so the AI does not get any of these cards. And that's the game, everyone. Whoop, whoop. Played extra, extra, an older newspaper game. Ooh, that sounds really interesting. How does it play Time Roller? Like, what are the mechanisms? We just bought a copy of Ghost Stories because I was telling my group how difficult it is because our friends have a copy. Um, excuse me, I think it's out of print now as it is an older game. It was very difficult to find a copy. Yeah, I've heard. Uh, we played yesterday. Um, to no one's surprise, we died. <laughs> all right. So, we are now all finished with the game. So I'm going to take all my workers back and we are going to score my shelf and also the, oh, this is so many cards. I'm going to just put the public libraries cards 
like this. Hopefully you guys can see them. These are my cards that they are not getting. Really, we just need to see the circles here. So we're just gonna put them in some lines. I feel like I let the AI get way too many cards. This is, this is a lot. I feel like Nick did not have this many cards in his hand or in the, the public library. Ugh. Nick Murphy, if you're watching this right now, I'm so sorry you had to watch this. I don't think he watches my streams. Maybe sometimes. But I do remember Nick saying that this is a pretty difficult game. I just like don't, I'm pretty sure he played this at like a difficult mode and I don't even think he had this many cards. Ma God. The public library has so much. What the heck? I went to play a hockey themed game where when you do the scoring, you call it the Zamboni round. <laughs> I should design it, oh my goodness. Worker placement and Tetramino placement. Ooh, that sounds fantastic. I love the sound of that. All right, so. The public library's focus is this. I'm gonna put mine over here. All right, these are just out of the game. Okay, so. Alphabetical order check. Mine is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. So yes, and then this is seven, five, six, seven, two, two, four, one, six, one, four, six, three, three, nine, ten, four, or three, sorry, two, two. Okay, so alphabetical order check is perfect. We did great. So then we get, I believe, one victory point for every different color. Is that what that is? I think this first section is not like you don't get points for them. It's just to see how many each of each of them you get. So we have corrupted codices. I have one, two, three, I only have four corrupted codices, oh no. Fantastical fictions, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12. Historical volumes, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Monster manuals, I have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, reference texts, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Reference texts. And spells and potions, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right, now we have to count up all the AIs. So for black, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Oh my God, are you freaking kidding me? Fantastical Fiction, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Well, how do you even control the public library here? Historical, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. 28. All right, all right. 
monster manuals. They have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 28 of those as well. And then blue, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve of the reference texts. And then potions, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty, one. 21. Okay. I need to look up how the scoring goes, so please give me a second. Uh, first, you must discard all cards remaining in your hand. Next, spread the discard pile out into several columns so you can see. Yep. Yep. Alphabetical order. The public library does not check the alphabetical order, obviously. Um, next, for each category, record the total number of matching individual books in both of your shelves in the public library. Yes. Survey shelf stability. Survey your shelf stability as normal. The public library does not. All right. But like, do I get do I get coin? Do I get points for things? Okay, so I was right. There still might be some hope, guys. There still might be some hope because none of these numbers they're getting points for. Um, so the shelf stability, um, shelf stability is one point per card in their bookshelf that is their largest stable group of cards. So mine is my entire shelf. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six times three. So I got 18 points for that. Um, bestow prominent works award. So that is, they get 15. Unfortunately, I get zero. I don't think I get a second place award for that. So I get zero, they get 15. Um, assign banned books penalties. So banned books, I get negative five, they get negative 28. See, that's where it comes in. Um, assess categorical variety bonuses. Each player earns three points for every book in their bookshelf of the category which they have the least. All right, so they have the least reference text, so they get 12 times three, so they get 36. And then the least in mine is Corrupted Codices, and I have four times three, so I get 12. Ooh, okay. See, the, the negative 28 is where it's going to get you. Um, harder or some sort of Fall Guy shenanigans where you try to avoid things. What is this? It hurts my heart to watch you write on the game materials. Uh, I can't bring myself to do it. I would photocopy the page to score likely or just do it on a spare paper, lol. I know. It's dry erase. Yeah, this is dry erase, which is really nice. Um, so I can just erase it after. Um, it's really actually amazing that they did this um, because usually in a board game, a typical board game, you have scoring sheets and those always get thrown out. But this one, you can just like continuously use this as your scoring sheet. Um, this is the multiplayer scoring side and this is the solo player scoring side. So I, I really think that um, board games need to do this more often where they have a dry erase, um, a dry erase score sheet. Like it's not that hard. And like everyone, if you're in the board game hobby, for the most part has a dry erase marker. Um, so that's good. Okay, uh, reveal and score library focuses. So I have spells 
and I'm gonna get two points for every spell. I have 16 times two is 32. And then theirs is the reference text. I only allowed them to have 12. Um, Cause I, I managed to like keep a lot of the blue ones away from them. So they got 12 times two, so they got 24. There's a possibility that I might have won guys because the only things that you are um, adding up are this here. All of these numbers at the top are kind of just for you to see how many of each number or each type they got um, for scoring purposes. So we are going to be adding up just these and I think there's a possibility that I might have won. So let me quickly do this. And I think I did better than I thought. So I have 18 minus five plus 12 plus 32. So I got 57. I did better than their, their like, uh, their example on the rule book, which is good. And then they got 15 minus 28 plus 36 plus 24. Oh God. Oh, they got 47. Oh, I won. Oh my goodness. I was not expecting this. The number that they got here, the number of cards that they got really scared me, but it's really not the amount of cards that they have. It is all about the, the like scoring things, like their focus, also the negatives for the band books and the historic volumes and things like that. Um, wow, okay, awesome. So I got 57, the AI got 47. I am the wiener, fun, fun, fun. That makes me really happy. I, I thoroughly enjoyed this game. I'm not gonna lie, that was a lot of fun. Um, there are like a bunch of different um, locations that you can go through. We got the wishing well, we got the ye old book swap, garbage dump, and donation center. So those were the four that I didn't use. Um, and then there are a bunch of different libraries that you can use, which is fun. Oh, Walter's barking. I think Francis might be home. Um, but that's so fun. And like every single one, every single one of the libraries has like a different worker that has special abilities. Super fun. Francis is home. Perfect timing. Okay, friends. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate you guys. Sorry about the barking dog upstairs, but I'm pretty sure Francis and I are going to go and walk the dogs and relax for the rest of the night. Thank you again for joining. Liesl, thank you so much for sticking around. I appreciate you. Um, thank you also for following. Um, good stream. Zephyr, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining. Tim, thank you so much. Have a good rest of your night. Super fun stream. Thanks, Jenna. Thanks for joining, Tim. I appreciate you always, well, most of the time being here. I appreciate you, Tim. Uh, thank you, thank you. Kim, thank you so much. Vicky, Melinda, Joe, Jelly Stars, Sprudel, thank you so much. Say hi for, uh, say hi from me. Francis? Francis? Yeah? Sprudel says hi. Hi, Sprudel. <laughs> Did you hear him? <laughs> Hopefully you heard him. Kat, thank you so much for joining. Yes, I will see you at the con. Also, Steph, if you're still here, I'll see you at the con as well. Oh. Yes. Yay. I'm so happy you, you heard him. Uh, thank you guys again so much for joining. Let me quickly check to see who we can raid. Um, Bonds. We can probably raid Bonds. Or Jeff is playing Stardew Valley. Foster the Meeple. Maybe let's go raid Foster the Meeple. Because I, have, I don't think I've ever raided. And that would be very nice. Because I have given... Oh God, I hate, I hate hearing my voice. What con is happening this weekend? It is Ragnarok in Kitchener, Ontario. Um, thank you so much for following. I don't know, I, your name disappeared too quickly, but I appreciate the follow. Thank you so much. Okay, let me do forward slash raid. 
There's a possibility that Jeff might be finishing up soon, but hopefully that worked. I think it did. Um, thank you guys again so much for hanging out with me tonight. Appreciate you all. Have a good rest of your Wednesday. I think I might have started off this stream by saying happy Tuesday, but it's full on Wednesday. Apologies. I guess that our friend can't drive us. He's going to BC. Oh, give us all the juicy details. Sounds good, Kim. Sounds good. Um, yeah. Anyways, thank you guys all so much. Have a good rest of your week. Um, a little reminder that I will not be streaming this weekend. Um, I'm not going to have a solo Sunday because I will be at Ragnarok um, playing some games. But I will be vlogging there and there will be a vlog up on the Board Game Garden YouTube channel next week. So get excited for that. Appreciate you all. Have a good rest of your night and a good rest of your week. Bye, friends. I'm kidding. We're back. <laughs> Apologies, friends. Um, let's do someone else. We're going to do Bonds. We're going to do Bonsinator because apparently Jeff uh, is logging out. So we're going to go raid Bonsinator. Again, thank you guys all so much for hanging out with me. Appreciate you all. See you later.